Hello everyone, this is Dr. Meher Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to learn how to solve problem sum based on working capital financing under the subject strategic financial management. Again, a very important topic for all the TYBMS students appearing for semester 6. Now, in order to solve the sum, okay, we will be first going through a format, uh, some working notes and some formulas. Okay, in order to solve the sum. So, first we'll go with the for, uh, format, some working notes, some formulas and thereafter we'll be solving one important sum which mostly covers up each and every uh, thing related to working capital financing. So, let us see first what is the format for solving sum based on working capital. Okay, here is a statement showing the working, working capital needed. We have particulars, we have formula cover one column and then we have amount cover one column. Working capital basically is nothing but the difference between your current asset and your current liability. Okay, under current, current asset, remember there has to be five, minimum of these five things. Stock of raw material, work in process under which you have again raw material, labor and overheads, finished goods, debtors and cash. These are the five things that has to be there in your current asset. Once you get the value, we get the total current asset. After that, we note down the current liability. Now, there are only two things which you have to remember in current liabilities. We have creditors and we have outstanding. Again, outstanding has labor and overheads. When you subtract total CA with total CL, you get your gross working capital. In the question, if there is any margin of safety given to us, then we add it to working capital and that becomes our net working capital. If there is no net margin given or you know, margin of safety given, then your gross working capital eventually becomes your net working capital. Okay, formula may the formula is very simple as unit multiply by the rate multiply by the period. Unit and rate will appear from the working note that we will create. Period is the only thing which we will have to check in the question. Okay, now I want everyone to see that you will note down this particular format and one more very important thing after noting the format. Some rules. The rules stated that is work in process labor and overhead whatever answer you will get we'll have to take half of that because the work is still not done so labor and overhead under work in process will always be half for finished goods the rate will be always taken as cost of production car rate for debtors it will always be taken as selling price car rate and for creditors it will always be taken as raw material car rate Okay, so these are the, uh, you know, three to four simple rules that you'll have to remember. Number one, under WIP, labor and overheads will always be half. Debtors are on selling price, finished goods is all on cost of production and creditors is on raw material. Okay, well, once I'll make that format, see that I'll even note down these particular rules which I've written in red. Next, after noting the format, okay, the next thing up here is your working notes. Two working notes we have to create. One will we will be able to find the units. The other one will be for the rate. Okay. So for working note number one will be where you have to create a cost structure which consists of raw material plus labor plus overhead that gives you cost of production plus profit gives you sales. This entire format is basically used or working note is used to get the rate amount of your sum. Okay. So all the rate will come from this particular table. Second, we need to get the number of units. So the unit ka formula is number of unit is equal to annual production, full year ka production divided by 12 if it is monthly base, divided by 52 if it is weekly base and divided by 360 if it is daily basis, depending on the question. Okay, so these are the two working notes which are very important that we need to solve before solving the sum because uh, from cost structure we'll be able to find the rate from uh, the number of units formula we will be able to get the number of units after getting this okay we will be solving the sum based on working capital and after solving the sum based on working capital there will arise one question where they will ask you to find the maximum permissible bank funding okay or bank financing so for that there are three formulas that we will have to follow it's called methods of lending under tendon committee where we will be finding the maximum permissible bank finance. Three methods are there. Number one, 
we have to get the value of 75% of CA minus CL that is current asset minus current liability. Second method is 75% of CA minus current liability. And the third one is 75% of current asset minus core current asset. Whatever you get the value minus current liability. Okay, so these are the three uh, formulas that we need to note down under Tundin Committee whereby we will be asked to find the maximum permissible bank finance. Okay, so now with all these three uh, slides that we went through, first the format and the working node and then the formulas. Now let us see how to actually solve the sum, you know, combining all the three parts of this particular sum. <coughs> okay. Here is a question in front of you all. From the following figures, prepare an estimate of working capital. Production may they are given you uh, 30,000 units. Selling price per unit is rupees 10. Raw material is 60% of selling price. Direct wages is one sixth of raw material. Overheads is twice of direct wages. Then they are giving you some uh, data related on months. So material in hand, production time, finished goods in store. Uh, they have given you credit for material, credit allowed to customers, uh, cash balance and thereafter they said wages and overheads are paid in the beginning of next month so there's something related to outstanding. Also calculate the maximum permissible bank finance as per Tundin committee assuming that the core current asset is 25% of total assets. So core current asset is 25% we will have to keep that in mind while solving ahead. Okay. Now in order to solve the sum the very first thing what we have to do is first always solve the working note. Number one working note will be based on our cost structure where we'll be getting all the rates. So let us start with that first working note. Okay, I have, uh, you know, the format is your structure. Raw material, labor, over COP, profit, sale. Let us see what, what things have they given us in the question. See, I can see your selling price per unit is rupees 10. So we note down that selling price is 10. So we have noted that. Raw material is 60% of selling price. So 10 ka 60% is rupees 6. So raw material is 6. Direct wages, that is nothing but labor, is 1 sixth of raw material. So raw material divided by 6 will give you 1. So labor is 1. Overheads is twice of direct wages. So it's double of direct wages. So di uh, double of 1 is 2. 6 plus 1, 7. 7 plus 2, 9. So my cost of production is 9. Selling price is 10. So I have got a profit of rupees 1. So our entire cost structure is ready. So all the rates will be taken from this particular table. Second, we need to get the number of units. Now number of units kill formula was annual production, which is 30,000 units. And in this sum entirely, they're talking about months. So it will be 30,000 divided by 12 because in a year there are 12 months. So once you divide, we get the number of units as 2,500. Now remember, in your entire sum, the number of units will remain 2500. The rate will be taken from the cost structure and for the period, we'll have to check the question. Okay, so the format is there. Okay, remember unit for the full sum is 2500. Rate comes from the cost structure and period will be there from the question. So let us start one by one. First thing, current asset, we have stock of raw material. Now remember for stock of raw material, the number of units that are required are 2500. The rate of raw material is rupees 6. And the period, let us check for the period. Here I can see your material in hand, that is raw material in hand is for 2 months. So we will apply to the formula unit into rate into period. So we get it as 2500 was the number of units. The rate was 6 and the period is 2 months. Just that is it. Unit taken from unit, uh, rate taken from the cost structure and period from the question and just uh, multiply it. That's it. That will be able to get each and every answer. So 2500 uh, into 6 into 2 will give you the value of 30,000 rupees. That is the value of raw material. Now next, under WIP, we have three things, raw material, labor and overheads. For all the three, again, number of units remain 2,500. For the rate, raw material is 6, labor is 1 and overheads is 2. Now for WIP or working process, there will be various names given in the question. Okay, They can give you in the form of 
uh, what is uh, you know processing period trade cycle period business period all those kind of stuff here okay so let us see what is given here um, yeah here they have given us production time in the question they are giving you production time is one month production time is nothing but work in process so for all the three the period will be one month now the most important thing remember for labor and overheads under wip whatever answer we will get we will always have to take the half okay so raw material 2500 into 6 into 1 labor will be 2500 into 1 okay the value is 15000 uh, for labor 2500 into 1 Uh, into the period one, and whatever answer you get, we'll have to take half of that. So I'll take it as zero point five. The value will come up to one two five zero. For overheads, again, number of units is two thousand five hundred. Period, uh, the rate is two. Period is one, and we always have to take the half of that. So the value comes to five thousand. Next, for finished goods, always remember finished goods. The rate is always taken on cost of production. So number of units remains two and a half thousand. COP is nine. And the time period for finished goods in store is three months. So we just multiply two thousand five hundred into nine into three. We get the value as sixty-seven five hundred. For debtors, we always take it on selling price unless mentioned in the question to take it on some other rate. Again, two thousand five hundred selling price is ten. Debtors, another name for debtors are customers. So customers' ka period is three months. So it will be two thousand five hundred into ten into three, which comes to seventy-five thousand. Cash is always given in the question, so that is forty thousand. So we note down that as forty thousand. So with that, uh, all our assets or our current assets are done. So we add up the total current asset and we get the total as two lakh thirty one thousand two hundred and fifty. With this, our first part of the sum is done. Now we jump to the second part, that is current liability under which we have to first find the value of creditors. Now. And again, credit a number of units is two thousand five hundred. The rule was credit as always taken on raw material, which is rupee six. So it will be two thousand five hundred into six into credit for material. Okay, these are suppliers. Credit for material is two months. So we will take this as two thousand five hundred into six into two, which comes to thirty thousand. Outstanding if given. Now uh, in the adjustment they are giving you wages and overheads are paid in the beginning of next month. But the current year, current month ka wages and overheads are paid in the next month. So there is a time lag of one month. So outstanding of one month is available. So the period is one month. Again two thousand five hundred into labor, which is one rupee into the outstanding period, which is again one month. Which comes to two thousand five hundred. No half. Here you don't have to take any half. Half is only in WIP. Over it's two thousand five hundred into two into one, which comes to five thousand. We add up, we get a total current liability as thirty-seven thousand five hundred. In the sum, there is no margin of safety given, so CA minus CL will be our final answer. That will be our working capital. So current asset minus current liability, the value that we should have got would have been one lakh ninety-three thousand seven hundred and fifty. With this, we were able to solve the problem sum based on working capital financing. Now, the next thing what they have asked us to find is calculate the maximum permissible bank finance, where they are giving you core current asset is twenty five percent of total asset. So that will be we'll keep that in mind because that will be useful. Remember one thing: just note down the value of current asset and current liability somewhere because I'll be you know we'll need those two values in order to get the tenant committee the values. Okay, so two lakh thirty one two fifty CA thirty seven five hundred is the value of current liability. Now let us see how to find the maximum permissible limit. In order to find, we'll have to use the tenant committee ka formulas. Three methods are there. Number one, the formula is the maximum permissible limit is seventy five percent of current asset minus current liability. So it is nothing but seventy five percent of two lakh thirty one two fifty. That was the current assets minus current liability. That was thirty seven five hundred. We will subtract it. Whatever amount you get of that twenty of that, we have to take seventy five percent, and that amount will come to rupees one lakh forty five thousand three hundred and thirty. So this is the maximum limit which the bank can give you as a loan under the first method. Under the second method, the formula is seventy five percent of current asset minus current liability. Current asset was two lakh thirty one two fifty. So seventy five percent of that, whatever amount you get. Minus thirty-seven five hundred. So the value that you all should have got would have been 
you know, 75 percent of 2 lakh 31 250 is 1 lakh 73 thousand 438 minus 37 500 will give you 1 lakh 35 thousand 938 rupees. This is as per the second method. As per the third method, the formula is 75 percent of current asset minus core current asset. Now, core current asset was remember in the question it was given as 25 percent of assets. Total asset is nothing but current asset. Okay, current asset was two lakh thirty one two fifty. Of that, we'll have to take twenty five percent. Okay, so it will look, look something like this: seventy five percent of current asset two lakh thirty one two fifty minus twenty five percent of two lakh two thirty one two fifty is fifty seven thousand eight hundred and thirty. We will subtract that, multiply it by seventy five percent. Whatever answer you get from that, we'll have to minus the current liability. So it comes to one lakh thirty thousand seven eighty minus thirty seven. 500. So our final value will be rupees 92,578. Okay. So that is the three maximum permissible bank limit. Okay. According to the method of tendon committee, the first method, second method, and third method. With this, the entire sum based on working capital financing comes to an end. We started off with the working notes. Then we used that entire statement to get the working capital, and from that we were able to get the maximum permissible bank finance according to the Tandem Committee. Okay, this is like a full-fledged sum that has been completed. Okay, so I hope everyone have understood the topic based on how to solve sum or uh, based on working capital financing under the subject strategic financial management. With that, we will be ending this video here. Thank you.